So we have navigation, but how about logic? Linking the parts of our interface and the code behind the scenes so that our app can actually do something useful. This might sound simple, you've done it before using Intelligent Editor and Control Drag. And it's the same with WatchKit, except while your interface is running on the watch, your logic is running on a completely other device, the user's iPhone. This does add a slight level of extra complication, but the way WatchKit is done, and it's done very well, that's, it's not really worth worrying about. So let's select the original interface controller that Xcode gave us and open the intelligent editor, as I have here. As you can see, the interface controller class comes up. This contains a number of functions. The first is int. When the interface is first created, this function initially sets it up. The next function is the will activate function. This function runs just before your application launches and gives you the chance to set up your app's interface before it displays. This is what you should use to set up your app's interface, not the int function. The final function is the did deactivate function. This runs after your interface disappears and is used to clean up after the user and save any information. So both these are useful, but right now all we really want to do is connect a button to our code. As you can see, I've set up an interface with a button and a label. So first, we select this button and we control drag from the interface into our code. Like always, we have outlets and actions. We're going to select an action because we want to have the action of this button being pressed. Now we type in button pressed because that's what I'm going to call my function. So we have a function. We're going to do something really simple. We're just going to run a print line. And we're going to print line something. Oh, that's spelled wrong. Who cares? So now we have this. We've linked our interface to our code. We're going to build our app and run it and see what happens. So here we have our uh, Apple Watch simulator. We press our button a couple of times. As you can see, for each of those times, something, or my horrible spelling of something, my gibberish, is printed to the console. So we have actions. How about outlets? How about we put an outlet on the label for changing the text? And we're going to change the text when the button's pressed. So we'll drag this um, up here. Of course, we have no actions on this, so it's just an outlet. And let's go label. So we have our label. Now, how do we change the text? So down here, we're going to get rid of our print line. We're going to go label dot. Oops. So normally, to change the text of a label, we just go label dot text. But that's not there. Because we have to run functions to change things on the device. Because, of course, it's that two device sort of thing. So the function we're going to use is set text, which, of course, sets the text of the label. I'm just going to make this that there. See, I'm original. We're going to run our app again. So we have our button. And when we press it, it changes our label to that gibberish. So the final thing I want to do is create another interface. We drag another interface controller onto the screen and I'm just going to make it a page between these two so we can just slide between them. So normally what would you do now? You'd make a class. We have to put our class up here in our app and our watch kit extension. So to make sure that uh, the file goes in this folder. We're going to select a file that's already in the folder. I'm going to go new, file, and this is the thing that might change. Kukoa touch. So in this drop down we want to select WK interface controller. And we're going to call it second. Done. We're going to create that and make sure watch kit extension is selected because that's what it's going to be part of. It's going to be part of our extension. So as you can see, we have this. This is all that's created because the SDK isn't complete yet. In the future, this probably will change. It definitely will change. So if it looks different from this, don't be shocked. But for now, we're going to have to copy some things over from our default interface class. So first, we need to copy over these two imports, the two frameworks that we need to import, and replace UIKit with those two frameworks. 
the other thing we need to copy over oops, is these three functions that are the int setup uh, will activate and did deactivate. And now just to confirm that this uh, view controller is activating, I'm just going to go print line did uh, that's probably spelled wrong, who cares. Um, final thing we need to do is link our view controller to our our interface controller to our class. So second. Let's run the app and see how that works. So here we have so I just move this over so you can see the console when we slide on over did activate which is of course from our second view uh, interface controller slide back over so there's a lot more things you can do with logic in WatchKit apps and I'm going to be talking them about them later in the series and if you want to go forward now you can go forward in the playlist but for the next video I'm going to talk about how layouts work in WatchKit